Welcome to the Protoast Podcast. Today's date is Friday the 3rd of December and you're listening to a weekly roundup of the most important stories from the past week as reported by us. We're back and we're better to start than in China where it looks like they're cooking up their own and slightly more boring version of NFTs. Elsewhere, Jack Dorsey has stepped down as CEO of Twitter and the mother of Silk Road mastermind Ross Ulbricht is turning NFT dealer to try to get her boy back on the streets. But first. China looks to be building an off-brand version of the crypto industry, starting with its own slightly more boring version of NFTs. Thing is, not a lot of people seem to know what the country is up to. Even Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin didn't know a BSN version of Ethereum existed last year. But last week, the Alibaba-sponsored media firm South China Morning Post published a white paper describing an NFT system for archiving historical assets on state-approved blockchains. Alibaba and Tencent recently scrubbed their websites of NFTs altogether. Immediately before that erasure, Beijing officials referred to the NFT market as a potentially huge bubble and chastised marketplace operators. Alibaba and Tencent kowtowed immediately and now refer to NFTs as digital collectibles. In 2018, the two companies filed for more than 2,000 blockchain-related patents amid Beijing's then-apparent enthusiasm for distributed ledgers. But now that China's central bank digital currency is nearing its February 2022 launch date, Jinping has banned crypto mining and several independently developed blockchain projects. China plans to launch its CBDC during the next year's Winter Olympics, tapping Tencent to help with its development. Seemingly undeterred by having to change the name of NFTs for the Chinese government, Alibaba has now launched a marketplace on which artists can create digital collectibles to copyright their work. Its marketplace, Blockchain Digital Asset and Asset Trade, uses the new copyright blockchain platform created by the Sichuan Blockchain Association Copyright Committee. SCMP claims that the system for archiving media posts will assist with preserving history. It refers to NFTs created using the system as, quote, artefacts. SCMP will showcase the system with what it refers to as key moments in its archive. It claims to possess 118 years worth of material. The Artifact Project, alongside CryptoPunk's Dapper Labs, has already launched the NBA Top Shot 1997 NFT series trading cards, which includes events such as Princess Diana's death and the handover of Hong Kong from Britain to China. Next, SCMB plans to create state-sanctioned digital collectibles of moments from Hong Kong's history. It plans to launch its artifact project on a few blockchains pre-approved by the Chinese government. Its roadmap calls for a decentralized authentication system. SCMP plans to launch a DAO for governing artifact. It published Artifact's light paper on its website in July. Next up, Jack Dorsey, Twitter's resident Bitcoin bull, has stepped down as chief executive for the second and final time. New chief and former technology officer Parag Agrawal has already replaced him. Dorsey will continue to serve on Twitter's board until a stockholder meeting in May 2022 when his term expires. He'll also maintain a CEO role at his fintech venture Square, where Bitcoin features prominently in its major offerings such as Cash App. In a letter to staff shared on Twitter, Dorsey explained he's quitting for good after 16 years at the social media giant to allow it to flourish independently. He wrote, quote, there's a lot of talk about the importance of a company being founder led. Ultimately, I believe that's severely limiting and a single point of failure. Dorsey is famously pro Bitcoin, but his replacement is noticeably silent about crypto. In his own letter, new chief Agrawal said he was honoured and humbled to be chosen for the top job. Agrawal said he joined the company 10 years ago, where there were fewer than 1,000 employees. He's one of the lesser-known faces of Twitter's exec team. Still, he comes backed by both outgoing Dorsey and the company's board, which unanimously agreed to appoint him. Bringing it back to crypto now and compared with his predecessor, Agarwal hasn't commented much about Bitcoin or crypto at all. In fact, he's only tweeted once about Bitcoin in 2019 after a trip to Nigeria. Both Agarwal and Dorsey were present at a crypto-centric conversation about Bitcoin in Africa. 
Dorsey, on the other hand, isn't coy about Bitcoin. He's headlined the Bitcoin Miami conference last year, funds Bitcoin core developers via Square Crypto, and established Copper to defend Bitcoin's white paper from Craig Wright. As much as Dorsey sympathises with Bitcoin maximalist, Twitter under Dorsey more or less publicly piloted Ethereum-powered features like Sense Valuables. In March, Dorsey used Valuables to sell his first ever tweet as a non-fungible token. The Genesis tweet sold for 1,630 Ether, worth $2.9 million then and $7.4 million in today's money. Dorsey then dumped it immediately for Bitcoin before donating the funds to charity. But while Dorsey has toured far off places like Africa and Ethiopia to promote the benefits of Bitcoin, the most revealing Twitter post from his replacement was his hope of receiving a work anniversary present at 10 years of service. Now, it should be noted that Agrawal's wife, Vanita, is a general partner at notorious token vacuum Androsine Horowitz, stylistically known as A16Z. However, as a trained physician, she seems focused on clinical investments over crypto. Since January 2020, she's headed up A16Z's bio fund, backing ventures in therapeutics, diagnostics and digital health. Elsewhere, A16Z invests widely across the crypto ecosystem, particularly DeFi, and even appeared on the cap tables for the painfully exploitative projects WorldCoin and BitClout. In any case, Twitter's Bitcoin-tinted glasses appear to be coming off. Even before taking the top job, Agrawal welcomed members of the wider crypto world into the Twitter team. The new chief exec tweeted to welcome a developer sporting an Ethereum-centric .eth domain early this month. And Agarwal was in charge of picking the lead for the social media firm's crypto department and installed MENA Foundation board member Tess Reinerson. MENA Foundation received a $1.2 million grant from the Ethereum Foundation in September. Twitter's new head also chose Zcash developer Jay Graber to head up Blue Sky, Twitter's decentralized social media standard. Lynn Ulbricht, the mother of Silk Road creator Ross Ulbricht, isn't quite following her son's footsteps in creating an underground drug empire. Rather, she plans to auction some of his art as non-fungible tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. Ulbricht explained on Clubhouse that after fees, approximately only half of the NFT proceeds will be used to pursue her son's clemency. Ross is currently serving a double life sentence plus 40 years for operating the dark net marketplace Silk Road. Well, bidding opened on December 2nd. It started just at a dollar. It's now already surpassed 261 Ether or just over $1.1 million. A portion of these proceeds will be going to Art for Giving to help other prisoners and their families. Ulbricht also said she would like to fund a project that helps children travel to see their parents in prison. As it stands, Ross isn't allowed to communicate electronically from prison, and so his mother occasionally relays his handwritten messages publicly instead. She also manages Ulbricht's Twitter and Medium accounts and operates freeross.org and coordinates the hashtag FreeRoss campaign. Entopic and SuperRare are facilitating the sale. Tech collective Canon used its K-Spec protocol to transform Ulbricht's hand-drawn art and stories into animated NFTs. Canon describes K-Spec as an open source, permissionless, on-chain protocol for creating institution-grade NFTs. Instagram influencer Trippy is also confirmed to be a collaborator alongside Canon as its meta architect. Trippy Labs also curates other NFT collections for Super Rare. Its website features artwork known as Trippies and aims to launch other NFTs on the Solana blockchain. Apart from Ulbricht's clemency and charity donations, the remainder of the NFT sale proceeds will go to intermediaries such as Trippy Labs Associates, marketing and community managers, Entopic fees and super rare and Ethereum fees. As we've mentioned, Ulbricht is serving quite a hefty sentence. That's a double life plus 40 years, if you forgot. A jury convicted him in 2015 on charges relating to his operation of Bitcoin's Silk Road Darknet Marketplace. He's already served eight years in a maximum security prison. And now over 456,000 supporters have signed a change.org petition in support of clemency. According to freeross.org, organisations supporting him include the Law Enforcement Action Partnership, Cato Institute, Reason Foundation and Students for Liberty. 
Individual supporters include Litecoin creator Charlie Lee, Bitcoin Cash instigator Roger Ver, actors Russell Brand and Keanu Reeves, and politicians Ron Paul and Gary Johnson. Even Elon Musk has chipped in. He called Ulbricht's sentence excessive back in February. As part of the case, two law enforcement agents have faced misconduct charges in the handling of Ulbricht's case. A court found Secret Service agent Sean Bridges guilty of stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Bitcoin tied to the Silk Road investigation. A separate case saw U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agent Karl Mark Force convicted of attempting to extort Ulbricht. And to add to the mess, an analysis of Silk Road databases show that an unknown party deleted evidence related to the case. Ulbricht's mother argues that these two agents unfairly tainted the investigation. According to Ars Technica, the Free Ross campaign, as of July 2015, had raised a total of $370,000 in cash and crypto to fund Ulbricht's legal defence. Although he's faced a number of setbacks, including the loss of an appeal to overturn the conviction in 2017 and the Supreme Court's refusal to hear the case in June of 2018, Ross Ulbricht has now few options remaining except a presidential pardon. And that's your lot. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode, but we realise there's only so much we can cover in just one episode. So if you want more of the stories that matter, then check out protos.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the Protos podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other major podcast provider for more weekly roundups. We'll be back next week. See you then.